If there's one thing certain in this world, it is change. Um, for generations, we've been doing things a certain way, and that's not relevant anymore. And therefore, understanding what needs to change, understanding how to change it, and being ready for change, embracing it, is wiser than not. My name is Amala Akineni. I am an actor by profession. I'm also the co-founder of Blue Cross of Hyderabad, an animal welfare organization, working last 30 years in Hyderabad city. My day job is director of Annapurna College of Film and Media, which is uh, run by my family inside Annapurna Studios campus at Banjara Hills. The topic I have today is channeling energy to serve your purpose. I hope, like the speakers before me, my journey and my life and my learnings will be of inspiration to you. I'd like to start with a quote by Swami Vivekananda. He talks about education, I thought it's appropriate, and how it's not about the facts and figures and all this knowledge crammed into the brain, which can run riot if undigested, but it's about being able to assimilate a few ideas that are life-changing and character-building. And if, he goes on to say, if you can find five in your lifetime that will change your life, that will build your character, then you will have a good education, unlike memorizing a whole library of books. So looking back at my life, I was a very ordinary child, um, born to parents who were naval officers. Uh, my mother was is Irish, my father is Indian, and I grew up perfectly normal until I discovered classical dance. And I just fell in love with the dance. I saw Padma Subramaniam perform, and I thought it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I started dancing, and my parents were kind enough to send me to Kalakshetra in Chennai, which is a finance institute, and I went to school there, college there, and all along studying dance. And the dance just lifted me out of my ordinary life and just helped me find my way. Uh, by the time I was 13, I was performing with the troupe, Kalakshitra troupe, it was world famous, and we traveled the breadth of India, and we traveled abroad, and all of this under Rukmini Devi Arundel, who was the director at that time. And uh, Rukmini Atte, as we called her, used to argue with my principal, because my principal, to say, she's missing class, she's miss not got her attendance, you're taking her all over the country. And Rukmini Atte would say, what better education can you provide a young person than the university of life? So that's the atmosphere I grew up in, the university of life. Around the same time, I'm an animal crazy person. Something happens to me, and I start understanding animal. I start discussing animal, and uh, I rescued my first animal when I was young. Fortunate for me, my mother did encourage me. She rolled her eyes, and then she let me inside the house, and she gave me a little place where I could clean up the animal, treat it, get it treated, and when it died, she gave me her shoulder to cry on. I am very grateful to my mother for allowing me to experience that whole process. It's not easy. After Kalakshetra, I had a successful career in films. I did uh, 58 films in five, I have done 58 films in five different languages. So I traveled again, the, the Kalakshetra training, it uh, enabled me to travel around, understand different cultures, adapt to different languages, and um, I had a successful career, during which time I uh, met my husband, Nagarjuna. We got married, and I moved to Hyderabad. Hyderabad, I arrived here, and I saw sick and injured animals lying on the streets. You know, in Chennai, I'd been volunteering with Blue Cross of India, and uh, they're an animal welfare group, and uh, they, I always knew a number to call, and here, there was nobody, so I started rescuing them and bringing them home, and it was my husband, Nagarjuna, 
who saw the potential and he said you're doing it for yourself that's very comfortable why don't you think big why don't you think of doing something for all animals in the city why don't you th start it as a as a city service and that pushed me out of my comfort zone it was his vision and i did it and i started blue cross of hyderabad and all the city animal welfare people the animal friendly people came together joined me and that has been the work we've been doing for the last 30 years if you haven't yet found those things or that, something that inspires you i invite you to keep a notebook and write it down every time you see someone who inspires you or you you experience something that you feel you want to make the world a better place you want to make a change write it down because those are priceless those are really priceless things which then you can dedicate one hour in the week to actually work towards it i have a a wonderful training in classical dance the classical dance as sports and any craft any artistic craft or sport it gives you something called the practice so when you when you know nothing and you start you learn something and then every day you get up and you dedicate that time to the practice this is what makes you a dancer this is what makes you a sports person this is what recognized at your art or your craft and the dance you have to it huge amounts of energy and you have to pace yourself for about 3 hours during rehearsal and uh, you slowly reach your goal and this is a beautiful process to have to try anything i used it uh, to uh, apply myself to being an actor in the movies i used it to learn animal welfare and to build my organization and i used it to prepare for today's talk so the practice is a wonderful thing to have where you get an idea and then you dedicate a few hours every day or a few hours every week to work towards it i love to walk that's my hobby and when i walk all the ideas in my head tend to sort them out they kind of all fall into place walking is my meditation i walk early morning because that's the most beautiful time to be outdoor and i walked in every city i go to in every village i visited by the forest by the sea uh, by the mountains i have walked early morning and this is what i see every street there is a group of dogs and they run towards me and um, i walk with them and when i cross the road they stay behind and when i cross the road there's another group waiting there and they walk with me and they're very very territorial they will not leave their territory rapid urbanization across india has given rise to huge amounts of garbage this garbage breeds stray animals and too many stray animals there is fighting breeding disease and then it becomes a threat to humanity therefore animal welfare groups municipal bodies government of india animal welfare board of india came together and said we really have to resolve this because in the past when they kill the dogs there was a vacuum created the food source is still there the garbage when the vacuum is created quickly new dogs occupy that vacuum and the new dogs get, are more likely to attack and bite the more likely to carry rabies into the city and therefore this was a serious problem instead by adopting the local dogs the docile dogs that have grown up on the street sterilizing them vaccinating them against rabies you create a rabies free barrier you reduce the dog population and these dogs serve you selflessly to guard your street now i understand that a normal person when you see a pack of dogs running towards you you would be mortified terrified absolutely horrified and i know that i understand that but for a dog person like me it's a joy so we realized that not just sterilizing dogs and vaccinating them at the blue cross we had to also heal this relationship we had to help people understand how to coexist with animals because we share and it with millions of species thousands thousands of other creatures share this planet with us we can't live in isolation and therefore when a pack of dogs come running at me i speak dog and what is dog you know i mean no harm 
and they come and they smell me and they, they start skipping and jumping and they're delighted and I walk along with them. The picture on the right. We have a 50,000 year history and this is from the cave paintings. We've dated uh, paintings of human and dog living together back 50,000 years. I'm sure it was much longer. I'm, I'm absolutely sure. And this relationship is very sacred. Um, a hunter-gatherer would uh, go hunting and feed the dogs, the wild dogs, the scraps because the wild dogs would sleep around the cave and if any wild animal was coming in at night when the family was sleeping, the dogs would then send out the alarm and protect the family. It's a beautiful friendship that dates 50,000 years ago. This friendship is kind of um, either wearing out and so part of our program is to help digital natives who spend a lot of time indoors, online, to come out and experience the real world, come and make friends with other species. And um, we teach them how to behave around animals, how to recognize a sterilized vaccinated dog, how to behave with a you see, because a street dog doesn't like to be touched. If you don't want to be bitten, don't touch the street dog. It's very happy to come and say hello to you, smell you and walk with you, but it doesn't want to be touched. So don't bother. If you want to speak dog, no huggy kissy. That's not dog. Yeah? So if um, uh, you traumatize it or you run, running is an invitation to chase in dog. So if you see a dog around, just walk. Don't stare walk and you'll be sure the dog will ignore you or if he comes he'll just sniff and go off again it's scary I know for a person who's been bitten or a person who's seen somebody bitten it can be very scary but the dog is as afraid as hu of humans as we are of the dog rabies is a threat and therefore we also teach what to do in the case of a dog bite Rabies is a virus. We are more familiar with viruses now. It is fatal. It has no cure. And therefore, prevention is essential. And prevention is through a vaccination program. All warm-blooded animals need to be vaccinated. All dogs need to be vaccinated. We sterilize and vaccinate all the dogs that come into our program. And this is a mandate for every municipality. If you have a pet, please make sure you vaccinate it every year. There are things you can do when there is a dog bite and it will save lives. Quick um, first aid, wash the wound with running water and a strong soap. And wash it really well, thoroughly, scrub it. And do this for about 5 to 10 minutes so that all traces of saliva are gone. Put some antiseptic, do not bandage. And immediately go to the emergency room, start your post-bite anti-rabies vaccine. This first aid alone saves lives. If I leave you with three things to take away, I invite you to volunteer. I think um, volunteering is a beautiful life skill to have. It is a life-changing, character-building life skill. And I invite you to make time to go and volunteer. Some of my best friends I have made volunteering. Dearest friends, and uh, human and animal, I have made the best friends volunteering. It also takes you out of your comfort zone. Now, very often when we do well in life and we're comfortable, we're well looked after, we tend to surround ourselves with beautiful things and uh, perfection and comfort. And then to step outside is very intimidating. And to see suffering is even more overwhelming. And when you see suffering, you can get affected tremendously. When one volunteers, one learns to put the bravery armor on in the face of any kind of suffering or impoverished pain and suffering that is terrible, abuse, you have to be extremely brave and to 
continue to make change, to do something that will make the world a better place, you need to generate immense amounts of energy and determination. And that is what volunteering means to me. It is an important life skill for all of us to have. Climate change is very real. Uh, a plant-based meal is good for the planet, it's good for the animals, it's good for you. Do try and incorporate a plant-based meal every day. And last but not the least, if you're getting a pet, think of adopting. You'll be giving a homeless animal a home. I'll end here with a quote by Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a group, a small group of people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing it ever has. In the years of Blue Cross, during the first 10 years, it was very difficult. Everybody thought we were mad. They thought we didn't like human beings, and that's why we were preferring animals. And to convince them that no, it's that human, human beings can speak, but the animals also need a chance. And that they, when they're being abused and suffering around us, if we call ourselves human, we can't not help them. Nobody is telling you not to help humans. It was very difficult. And in 10 years, we managed to do that. And then the next 10 years, we started networks across the world, across the country, uh, to change policy and, and practice. And we did marvelous work. And then the last 10 years, we've been focusing on sterilization and vaccination of street animals. When I walk into a room, people often ask me, 550,000 animals you've helped. How is it possible? You must be having an army. You saw my team. We're 30 people. We are the army. We have the energy of the army of the universe. And it's because we believe in it, we can generate this energy and we can channel it to whatever we choose. I hope you can all find a worthy cause that inspires you to generate the energy of the universe and channel it to serve your purpose. Thank you.